Hey everyone, Virginia McLean here to read chapter 20 of Victoria Marmot and the Meddling Goddess. And uh, yeah, it's been a few days since I posted chapters. I'm doing the best I can to get them up somewhat regularly, but it's kind of hit or miss when it happens. So today I'll see if I can get more than one chapter up. I don't actually know. I'm kind of trying to squeak this in between things going on. I've got um, gardening and sourdough and a three-year-old in the other room so we'll see what happens but hope that everyone's doing relatively well and um and here's uh chapter 20 first uh when last we left our hero Vic was uh she opened her door and saw none other than her uh estranged twin brother who promptly entered her house and saw Soledad and then burst into flames (laughs) <laughs> that's uh that's that's what we've got so far um and launched himself at uh so yeah that's the that was the end of chapter 19 so now we're on to chapter 20 and we'll see what happens next <clears throat> so chapter 20 of victoria marmot and the meddling goddess no trev wait i called out as Sol shifted deftly into her sleek black panther form all while dodging and weaving against my brother's fiery attacks As my eyes adjusted to the scene, I saw that he hadn't actually burst into flames so much as turned into a phoenix, which I supposed amounted to the same thing, since a phoenix was basically just a big bird that caught fire. Trev, seriously, she was just about to explain how she knew where you were before you knocked on the door. Can you just give her a chance to talk before you burn her to death? The show that Trev and Sol were putting on was a good one, and it was nice to see that my brother had some impressive weapons in his arsenal. But... Sol had clearly been trained to fight by someone who knew what they were doing, and she was doing an excellent job of dodging Trev's attacks, countering just enough to give herself space without doing any damage to him. Seamus took a few steps back from the fiery kitchen drama and stood next to me. I really need to learn how to fight, he admitted, as we watched Trev and Sol go after each other. You and Sol didn't need me in the fight against Edic. I only made things worse. I nodded. Yeah, but your heart was in the right place. I sighed. And anyway, there are lots of ways to be useful without learning to fight. The only reason I've been training for the past ten years is because of what happened to Trev, even though my parents pretended it was because of the attempt to kidnap me. I can teach you a few things if you want, though. My sensei in Colorado had me helping to teach some of the beginner classes before I left. Seamus nodded. We both watched the tea kettle get knocked off the stovetop and go crashing to the floor. It's a good thing that's stainless steel, I mused. Seamus raised one eyebrow at me. Are you going to stop them? He asked. I shrugged. Trevor hasn't killed her, and if he'd been planning a fatal attack, I think she would be dead by now. Moreover, Sol has clearly been going out of her way not to hurt him, so that can't have escaped his notice. Whatever beef he has with Sol will probably be out of his system in another minute or two. You sound pretty confident for someone who hasn't seen her brother in ten years, he said. I smiled. He's still my twin. The only person I know better is me. But if he's been held captive that whole time... Seamus took a deep breath and ran his hand along the back of his neck. Don't you think it's possible he's changed in ways you can't understand? I nodded, the smile fading from my face. I'm sure he has, Seamus, but... I don't still... I still don't know... No, sorry. But I still know that if he were trying to hurt her, this fight would have been over a long time ago. I don't know who the better fighter is, but... I gestured vaguely at the two figures dodging and weaving in front of us. They're both clearly good, which means that if they were trying to harm one another, it would be over by now. Instead, no one has even drawn blood. Then why are they still fighting? Seamus asked. Because Trev is fucking furious, though I'm not sure why. When Sol batted at Trevor hard enough that he backed into my cupboard and set my coffee stash on fire, I drew the line. That's enough! I shouted running forward to put out the flames. Damn it, Trev! If I'd wanted it to taste like burnt asshole, I'd have bought dark roast. Sol and Trevor backed away from each other and looked at me with similar expressions of amusement, even though it was kind of difficult to to read flaming bird face. Do you want to explain what the fuck is going on now that you've had your little sparring match? Do you know each other? Trev resumed his human form, and I realized that eight years of shared bath time had not prepared me for seeing my 18-year-old brother naked. I took a deep breath and stared him in the eyes. 
Do you want to borrow some sweatpants? I asked, glancing at the charred remains of the t- jeans and t-shirt that Trev had been wearing when he walked in. He nodded, and I pointed upstairs. I'm not going anywhere while she's here to spread lies, he hissed. I shrugged. I promise not to believe a single word she says until you come downstairs. Trev glared at me. Sol shifted to human and smiled. The gesture was decidedly feline, even though she no longer had whiskers. I promise not to speak until you return, Avito. First door on the left, I said. By the time he came back down, wearing a pair of sweatpants with my old high school's mascot on the, fl- on the leg, Sol had once more donned the clothes that I'd given her earlier. So, please enlighten me as to why you two couldn't resist pretending to fight the second you saw each other. Trev scoffed. I wasn't pretending. But when I noticed she was going out of her way not to hurt me, I laid off the more devastating attacks. And I didn't come here to kill anyone, Sol said. Although, if that damn vampire shows up again, I may change my mind. I chuckled. Only after I kill him first. Trev glanced between us. What vampire is this? he asked. I shook my head. One who isn't even worth the time to discuss right now. Focus power, people. What the hell is going on between you two? Trev sighed. It's nothing personal. With Soledad, did you say? I nodded. We've never met before, but she smells like mom. She smells like what? Mom, Trevor said, saying a word that rhymed with home and looked at, and looking at me like I'd said the sky was orange. The Ministry of Magical Entities, Sol clarified. Trev kept looking at me as though I were growing a second head. How do you not know what Mom is, he asked. That's like never having heard of Congress. I sighed. Yeah, so about that. After you were taken, Mom, Dad, and I had our memories messed with, and then they pretended we weren't... I gestured between us futilely, whatever the fuck we are. Huh? Vic had never heard of anything from our world until I told her I was a werewolf last night, Seamus said. This morning, I corrected. It was late enough that it was technically this morning. Trev looked stunned beyond words. I have never heard of Mom, and until about 30 minutes ago, I thought you didn't exist and that I was a normal human. Then I smiled, as a single happy thought struck me. But I just turned into a snow leopard for the first time ever, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Trev smiled too. (laughs) Well, that's fun. I'd wondered what animal you'd wind up with. Our family has lots to choose from. Choose? I asked. Trev ignored me and turned to glare at Sol, even though she hadn't made a sound. We can talk about that later. She should explain why she knew where I was and, and why she's here. I would have argued, because every damn thing that came out of Trev's mouth spawned about 500 new questions in my mind, but I also wanted to know what Sol had to do with all of this, and why Trev had wanted to kill her because she'd smelled like mom. Sol cleared her throat and sat down on the stool she'd been perched on before Trev got here, but Seamus, Trev, and I remained standing. It's reasonable that you don't trust me right now, she said, taking a sip from one of the teacups that had miraculously managed to survive the the kitchen brawl. Because I do, as Trevor implied, work for Mom. That revelation caused Trev to hiss like an angry ostrich and Seamus to gasp, but I was still lost as to what the big deal was. Vic, Sol said, as though understanding my confusion, Mom is the organization that governs the magical community. It's the police force, the legislative force, the bureaucratic branch... Everything most governments do all rolled into one. Only where other governments are filled with elected officials and vary from region to region, Mom is self-elected and self and this it is the self-proclaimed governing body for magical entities all over the world. Trev gritted out between clenched jaws. I took a moment to put together the few tidbits that I understood about the magical world and realization came slowly. And it was Mom that decided to take an eight-year-old boy from his family, I asked, as the horror sank in. Why? Oh, they weren't just after me, Vic. They would have taken you, too, if Mom hadn't fought them off so well. My stomach turned, but I repeated the question. Why? I turned to Sol, who looked decidedly uncomfortable. She swallowed. They deem certain younglings to be dangers to themselves and others. But you and your brother were on a watch list. I don't know why exactly. They decided to take you. I don't know why exactly they decided to take you then, since I've only been working for, at Mom for about two years. But last night, my unit leader put me on a flight to come here and retrieve you. 
Trev squared off, putting himself between me and Sol, but I grabbed his shoulder and pulled him behind me. Cool your jets, Trev. I can handle the panther. I wasn't entirely sure that was true. Sol seemed like a pretty accomplished fighter, especially in her panther form, but I knew I could, at le I could do at least as well as Trev could. And have I mentioned how much I hate overprotective males? Twin brothers were no exception. So, why didn't you just nab me back in Rebuke's class and take me off to wherever it is you're supposed to drag me? Sol looked around the room, taking in the ceiling and the windows in particular, then she shook her head. I'm not at liberty to say. For some reason, that didn't piss Trev off the way I expected it to. He turned to me and mouthed the word, bugs. I nodded, finally understanding. Sol's exaggerated inspection of our ceiling. Okay, so what can you tell us? We shouldn't stay here very long, Sol replied which is precisely what someone would say if they were trying to get us to accompany them back to the bad guy's hideout, I muttered. At least Seamus laughed. Vic, where are Mom and Dad? Trev asked, after a moment of awkward silence. I felt like I'd been stabbed in the chest. They... they're... For some reason, I couldn't bring myself to say the word dead, so instead I copped out with... They disappeared in the Indian Ocean. Trev's eyes filled with tears, and I moved to him and wrapped him in another giant hug. This time, he doesn't, didn't hesitate before hugging me right back. I already knew that, but I had to make it sound like I didn't have access to our file, said a voice inside my head that was not my own. I startled, but Trev held me tight and didn't let me back away. We both have a lot more magic now than when we were kids, Vic. Don't you remember when we tried to talk to each other's minds back then? I was about to say no, but then the memories came flooding back to me. We tried over and over again for years. But the best we'd managed was to sense each other's uh, emotions. And since then, we'd never been sure that it was magic and not just knowing each other really well. Are you telling me this really worked? I asked. <laughs> Trev laughed slash cried into my hair. Hey, try not to snot on me too badly. There are hot people watching us. <laughs> but of course, that just made him laugh cry all the harder. What do we do to get out of this? I want to know what happened to you. Can you talk about that here? I had a million questions, and I wasn't sure I could keep any of them back now that I could just thank them at Trev. Yeah, Mom already knows that, so their listening spells won't tell them anything they don't already know. But when we get to the end of the story, I'm going to have to lie, or we're going to have to go somewhere else. Soul's right, though. They'll have figured out that I'm here, which means we need to go somewhere else soon. Can they see us, or only hear us? I asked. It depends on how long they've been monitoring you, but based on the fact that Sol only showed up here today, she probably only had time to set up listening devices. Wait, she's the one that set them up? Why do we even trust her at all, then? Well, we don't, but she might have useful information, and she didn't grab you when she had an easy chance, so... His thoughts trailed off for a moment, and I decided there was nothing for it but to give it a shot. Okay, I think I have a plan. I replied into Trev's mind, even though I could have easily said that bit out loud, because why the fuck not? Everything else in my life was completely insane, so why wouldn't I be communicating telepathically with my twin brother who I thought was dead slash never existed? I backed away from Trevor and started miming to Seamus that we should go for a walk to his house. He nodded and we all headed for the door. Just as we got to the front step, Gwyn popped into existence right in front of me. Jesus fuck, Gwyn, don't do that. You scared me. What's, what are you doing here? Gwyn frowned. You're all needed elsewhere, she said before somehow grabbing onto all four of us and then winking us all out of existence. And that is the end of chapter 20. Uh, sorry for the couple stumbling points. I'm uh, still doing all of these without a rehearsal run first because I don't really have time to do practice reads anymore. And so, uh, yeah, uh, my apologies for that. But um, yeah, it's a free reading. You get what you pay for, sorry. Maybe someday I'll have a chance to re-record them more smoothly. Um, I do hope to someday actually make this all into proper audiobooks, but for now, this is what we've got. Um, I think that's all I'm going to have time for today, but we'll see. Maybe I can swing another chapter in later. And um, yeah, I hope everyone's doing okay. I know it's been a long time now that we've been uh, holding steady, and um, I know some places are trying to open up perhaps a bit prematurely other places are opening up after a reasonable amount of time but um anyway i hope you guys are all able to stay safe and stay well and uh and i hope that these videos provide some amount of enjoyment see you in the next one